good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this does not work, man. It doesn't work. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods. Wake up. Wake up, guys. Whew. The draft is in the books. The draft is in the books. Man. You know, wow. For me, I had an incredible draft weekend. I, I just didn't, couldn't get up out of bed this morning. I just laid there from exhaustion. Um, I tried to give everything that I had and then some uh, for what we were doing. I hope everybody enjoyed what we did. But that experience was actually incredible. Um, sometimes things happen and you have to evolve and adjust and you look at it and you say it's going to be ruined. It's going to be terrible. You know, I wanted to be out in Vegas. I think we all want to be out in Vegas. I think we all want to be out in general, but we're having to adjust uh, to the times right now for the greater good. But you learn different things, and I got to be, it, it was just, to be here, to feel like I had Philly 500 sitting next to me, to be talking to you guys directly, looking at the comments, hearing the Dallas Cowboys seemingly to make really good moves, and shouts out to Will McClay. This draft, and in fact, and since the time that Will McClay has been the de facto GM, and I think Jerry Jones needs to just say, Will McClay is my GM. Will McClay has gotten more Pro Bowl players and found more diamonds in the rough and has more homegrown talent than anybody else. You can say a lot of things about the Dallas Cowboys, like Philly 500. They stink. We're going to double moonwalk in their ass. But the one thing you have to look through from the time, since basically 2009, which may be the worst draft in the history of the Dallas Cowboys, where literally we had traded away our number one pick for Roy Williams. And everybody else drafted was not only off the Dallas Cowboys, but out the NFL within three years. Three years. But this team has found more talent than anybody else. The problem has been doing something with that talent. And this, you can't really judge right now because you really got to see the players on the field. But on paper, right now, you look at the Dallas Cowboys that systematically took care of every need that they had. Every need. With the exception of maybe safety and, you know, that, that, that might even be something that happens by August. With somebody in New York who's definitely disgruntled. There's still players everywhere. To get C.D. Lamb, who Des Bryant broke the news last night, that C.D. will be another original 88 player. He will have 88 as a number. That number isn't just given to anybody. So, C.D., you got the weight of the Dallas Cowboys' great wide receivers on your back. Dude, you better hold up to that standard. We're talking about Hall of Famers and would be, should be Hall of Famers. You got a playmaker. You got defensive line. You got edge rushers. You got cornerbacks. This team has done everything in this draft that they needed to do. You even got a backup quarterback. Shout out to JMU, the new football factory. And I believe we even signed an edge rusher from JMU. Shout out to JMU. This team 
has literally taken care of everything they needed to this offseason. They swept out the coaching staff. The Jason Garrett error is over. It's done. It's out of here. It's gone. It's been put to rest. It's dead and it's buried. You have a coaching staff with experience from around the NFL, a different mindset, a creative offensive mind, a defense that'll play downhill. And you went out and you got all the players for it. This team has done everything you need to do to put a team on the field that can challenge for a Super Bowl with one thing left to do. The one thing, the unfinished business that's left to do is to take care of your quarterback. No if, ands, or buts. The Dallas Cowboys need to get this thing done. This is freaking ridiculous that you've gone through. You have literally taken care of everything for this franchise except for the one key piece that will not work without being taken care of. And that's getting Dak Prescott's contract done. Now more than ever. We got till July 15th, but right now, you can't afford to waste any time. We got new playmakers. We got new players. We got new offensive minds. You want your quarterback there, virtual reality or not. You want your quarterback, you want his mind, your body, his soul, and all to be right with the organization. We've seen what this line in the sand that we've made recent history as in last year between D-Law saying, I ain't signing the franchise tag. I won't play on the franchise tag. Hell, I won't even get my body together until I'm signed. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and that had a direct correlation <coughs> to play on the field. We saw Zeke Elliott. Here's the thing. We're hearing that Dak is participating in the OTAs. <clears throat> I want to take you back to a deja vu moment. Because if you remember, the speculation was that Zeke Elliott wasn't participating in OTAs. But he did. I think the Cowboys breathed a sigh of relief. Oh, he was only bluffing. You know, Zeke will be there until training camp came. And he held out. And I believe that that led to a direct correlation of when the game was on the line, I, I need a bro. Key moments in this season, I need a rest. Dak has never been the guy. The hot prospect. But Dak has outworked and outperformed everybody. And when Dak has gotten that role, that position, he never lets it go. He gives you everything that you want and more. And now it's time for the Dallas Cowboys to do the same in kind. I'm sick of hearing this. Well, he makes all kinds of money in endorsements. You know what? <clears throat> I would rather him say, you know what, I don't need these endorsements. I'm going to work on being the best quarterback in the history of football. That's my job. That's what I'm getting paid to do. It's time to get this thing done. No if, ands, or buts about it. You get that together, as Steve Smith said, you're looking at the new America's team dynasty. Not bad from a hater. All right, y'all. <clears throat> I got a lot of work to do. All you new channel members, I got to get your shot glasses out to you. Um, my man, somehow too got damaged. I got to get your shot glasses out to you. 
I got to get those racks out to you. So I'm going to be working in the shop today. Um, maybe we'll do some live streaming from there uh, if you guys want. If you want to just hang out while we're working in the shop, uh, leave a comment down below and say, hey, I want to hang out in the workshop with you and Mike. And um, we'll do that. We'll be going through and um, breaking down some of the players that we got, uh, how they're going to fit, how they might be used in the coming days. We want to make sure that right now, since we're home hunkering down, that we don't flood everything with you, that you have plenty of stuff to look at. And um, I feel pretty good about what we did. Um, what I'd like from you guys is whenever you do something, it's always go back. It's good to go back and reflect on what you did to autop autopsy the body, so to speak, and say, this worked, this worked, this didn't, this killed the body, and so on. So leave me a comment below and let me know what you liked about the draft show, what you think we should change, what we should keep, any suggestions on making it better, because we started something here, and I want to make sure that we make it the best. All right, I hope everybody has a great Sunday, and I'll see you soon.